This is the blessing of home. Micah 5.2 says, But you, O Bethlehem, Epaphra, are only a small village among all the people of Judah. Yet a ruler of Israel, whose origins are in the distant past, will come from you on my behalf. Sometimes when we are trying something new, or when we are facing a difficult decision, or when we want to celebrate something, or when we feel lost and alone and uncertain about life, the universe, and everything else, we need a blessing. We don't always think of it that way or word it like that. We say we need advice or support or companion or someone to come along beside and lift us up again so we can see more than the tops of our shoes. We seek a blessing. For many of us, we go home. We ask mom, we talk to dad, or brothers and sisters, close friends, those we grew up with, those who know us best. We want them alongside. We want to be in their presence. Somehow, we know that being there, being home, will make all things better. Maybe it won't be fixed or solved or wished away, but at least we won't be alone. We seek a blessing. Mary, faced with an incomprehensible burden and gift, ran to Cousin Elizabeth's house, looking for someone who knew a little of what she was going through, looking for a place to hide until the reality of her condition could become something real. She received a blessing. The prophet Micah spoke of a blessing coming to an unexpected place, an unassuming town, yet by God's grace would become the means through which God would bless the whole world. Bethlehem, the little town of blessing, we seek a blessing. We light these candles, the candle of hope, of peace, of joy, and of today, love, as a sign that we know blessing and we know waiting for blessing to be felt and lived. We light these candles as a sign that we still seek a blessing. It's time to go home. I want to share two scriptures with you today, one from the Old Testament and one from the New Testament. Our Advent reading came from Micah, Micah the fifth chapter. A ruler from Bethlehem. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephratha, are only a small village among all the people of Judah. Yet a ruler of Israel, whose origins are in the distant past, will come from you on my behalf. The people of Israel be, will be abandoned to their enemies until the women in labor gives birth. Then at last his fellow countrymen will return from exile to their own land and he will stand to lead his flock with the Lord's strength. In the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, then his people will live there undisturbed, for he will be highly honored around the world, and, there, and he will be their source of peace. And then from Luke, the Gospel of Luke, the first chapter. Mary visits Elizabeth. A few days later, Mary hurried to the hill country of Judea, to the town where Zechariah lived. She entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. At the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leaped within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Elizabeth gave a glad cry and exclaimed to Mary, God has blessed you above all women, and your child is blessed. Why am I so honored that the mother of the, my Lord should visit me? When I heard your greeting, the baby in my womb jumped for joy. You are blessed because you believe that the Lord would do what he said. May God bless his word to our hearts this day. Well, I was reminded this week that Christmas is coming. How many of you are ready for Christmas? How many of you have your packages all bought and wrapped? Men, how many have you got your how many of you men got your significant other a Christmas present this year? Or have it or are ready? 
Ooh, boy, that's a pretty low percentage. I'll, I'll be praying for you come Christmas. Well, my wife and I never exchanged Christmas gifts. But this year I got a call on Monday from a granddaughter. And he said, Grandpa, Granny needs a new cell phone. And I thought, what's this? Well, Granny's cell phone died. And I thought, uh-oh. I wonder if Grandma put her up to that. Well, Grandma's cell phone was so old that they were about to turn it off anyway, and then it died. So, guess what Deb's getting for Christmas? A new cell phone. And not only that, I went all out this year. And she's getting four new tires on Thursday. <laughs> so I just want credit out there. A cell phone and tires. Wow. What a Christmas at the Whipkey household. That will be good. We think of gifts at Christmas. We think of sharing our love through the giving of gifts. We have chosen this year to give a gift to UMCOR, United Methodist Committee on Relief. A gift that will go to the tornado ravaged areas of Kentucky and in that area. You can give an offering to the church and it'll go immediately to UMCOR as Michelle announced. And what I want to share with you is that every dime that is given goes directly to the tornado victims. That'll be our offering for the rest of this month. It'll be part of our offering on Christmas Eve because sometimes the greatest gift is caring for others. So I pray that you will, will pray about what you might do for others that have lost everything. Today our message is about leaping for joy, the joy of Mary. Will you pray with me? Lord, we open your word to see the, the prophecy of a child to be born who would lead and rule, who would bring peace. So Lord, as we've opened your word, as we Share this time together. May your Holy Spirit move in our hearts. May you walk with us. May you open us to understand. May you open us to a time when we might leap for joy. I pray, Lord, the words that I lift this day will be lifted up in honor and glory to you. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Pastor, that that title is kind of weird. Leaping for joy. How, how many of you have leapt for joy? When was the last time you leapt for joy? I think the Vikings won last week. Did you leap for joy? The Packers won? The Broncos? Maybe a local sporting team. Maybe a junior high team. When was the last time you leapt for joy? Well, quite a few years ago, the doctor told me, Barry, at your age, do not ever let your feet leave the ground. Good advice. Good advice. So I don't necessarily jump for joy anymore. I can't recall the last time I leapt. But it's Christmas. Should we be leaping for joy? at the birth of Jesus. Today we hear the story of Mary, an ordinary teenager who was chosen by God. In Luke 1, 26 through 33, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a village in Galilee, to a virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of King David. 
Gabriel appeared to her and said, Greetings, favored woman. The Lord is with you. Confused and disturbed, Mary tried to think what the angel could mean. Don't be frightened, Mary, the angel told her, for God has decided to bless you. You will become pregnant and have a son, and you are to name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David, and he will reign over Israel forever. His kingdom will never end. Beautiful words of the angel Gabriel to a young girl named Mary. How would you get that news, ladies? Wow. Now my mom was, my mom, my wife, Deb, was excited about her cell phone, not so excited about the snow tires. What do you think Mary felt in her heart as the angel said, Mary, you have been chosen. All of a sudden, Mary has a dilemma. Could it really be God calling her to this task? She never saw the angel, but she heard the words the angel spoke. And this is life-changing stuff. Mary must have felt a true dilemma in her heart. I'm a young teenager. I'm engaged to be married. I have never been with a man. I'm a nobody. So why would God call me? But Mary's response reveals the depth of her heart, the depth of her face. In verse 38, I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. That little verse speaks volumes of who Mary was. A young girl chosen by God. A young girl who was blessed by God. But a young girl who wondered, why? Why me? So Mary, filled with joy, went to see her relative Elizabeth, who was on the other spectrum, an older lady who could never have children. And, and finally, God had blessed Elizabeth and Zechariah. Zechariah, Elizabeth was a relative of Mary. Not sure exactly, maybe a cousin or an aunt, but they were related. And so Mary went. How many of you would want to run away for a bit when the news came upon you? I need to get away. I need to be with somebody who can understand what's happening to me. And it says, at the sound of Mary's greeting, Elizabeth's child leapt within her, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Powerful image. Elizabeth was carrying a little baby to be named John, John the Baptist. And Mary was carrying the Lord's son, Jesus. And this first meeting, John leapt within his mother's womb. This is so often how God works. In strange and wonderful ways. God delights in using ordinary people to accomplish God's work. We remember the story of the shepherd boy, David. Do you remember how David was chosen? He was the last of the last. His seven older brothers, bigger, stronger, more handsome, were not chosen by God. But David 
the little shepherd boy was chosen by God. For God does not look at the outside of our lives. God looks at the heart. And God chooses those whose hearts are open to be used. In this case, God chose the youngest and the smallest. And so it was that God chose Mary, a young girl, to bear God's son, Jesus. But even more important, Mary chose God. And that's the challenging part of our message today. For each one of us must choose God over all other things. So the question this morning is, have you chosen God this Christmas season? I want you to reflect on the this Christmas season. Have the events that you've participated in, and been a part of, or organized, do they bring honor and glory to God, to Jesus Christ, who is the reason for Christmas? Or do we get caught up in the world's view of Christmas? Have they brought the message of God's love, of God's hope, to others. In John Ortberg's book, The Life You've Always Wanted, he writes, we will not understand God until we understand this about God. God is the happiest being in the universe, yet God knows sorrow. Jesus is remembered, among other things, as a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. But the sorrow of God, like the anger of God, is his temporary response to a fallen world. That sorrow will be banished forever, forever from his heart on the day the world is set right. Joy is God's basic character. And God is the happiest being in his universe. Pretty profound. That's the reason we have joy at Christmas. That's the reason we're called to leap for joy. Because God loved us so much he sent his son, Jesus, to pay the price for my sin and your sin. That is the joy of Christmas. God's love for us. John 15, 9, Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so has I, have I loved you. Now remain in my love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be made complete. Joy. Joy at Christmas time. We, we hear of so much sadness. The sadness of missing a loved one at Christmas time. The sadness of, of not being able to give our family the, the things we'd like. The, the sadness of so many things. But Christmas brings joy. Because no matter what happens tomorrow, Christ is in the midst of our hearts and our lives. I spent a long period of time on Wednesday afternoon with Mavis Clark. Many of you don't know Mavis. They're new in our church. And Mavis is 92 years old. She comes from a ranch south of Lemon, South Dakota. Mavis is dying, actively dying, struggling for every breath of life. She is surrounded by her family and her daughter's home. And she sits in the recliner. And as, vis as I visited with her, she had the biggest smile on her face. Because her prayer every night is that Jesus will come 
and take her home. She wants to see Jesus. Her life is, is spent. Her body is ready. And the joy that Mavis shows warms my heart like nothing else. I have a soft spot for ranchers, farmers. 92 years Mavis had been on the farm. Her husband died a few years ago. She came in too rapid not too long ago to be cared for. And now she is excited to go home and meet Jesus. I saw the joy of Christmas in a woman who is dying. And it touched my heart so much that I said, yes, we need to leap for joy this Christmas. For it doesn't matter what happens tomorrow. Christ is in the center of our lives. Joy isn't about being happy. Joy is about trusting Christ. When Mary affirmed, let it be with me according to your word, Mary could never foresee all that little word, it, would mean in her life. It would be a pregnancy out of wedlock. It would be giving birth far from her home in a strange land. It would be a night of wonder filled with shepherds and angels. Wednesday night, Anne had a beautiful portrayal of the the night of Bethlehem upstairs. And the kids journeyed to Bethlehem to see Jesus. It would be a night of gifts from strangers. It would be a royal threat to the child's life. It would be fleeing to Egypt to save her family. It would be long years of seemingly simple, ordinary life. It would be three years of trying to understand the transformation of her son into the son, <clears throat> the son of God. It would be the horror of the cross. Be the horror of a mother's heartbreak as she watched her son die. And it would finally be the glory of the resurrection. Realizing that Jesus brought life for all. See, Mary was chosen by God. She was not rich. She was not famous. She had no power. She was a very ordinary young lady. But her heart was filled with extraordinary love. A love that allowed her to set aside her wishes so she might live for God. I read a story of a king, a king's dream. A certain king had a dream. In his dream he saw a huge pair of scales held in the hand of justice. The scales seemed to reach from earth to sky and in one side of the scales was a pile of gold, jewels, lumber, houses, lands, and all the symbols of earthly power. And in the other side of the scale was a nest of straw. The gold and jewels and houses and lands had tipped the scales down until the nest of straw was high into the air. And the gold-laden side of the scale touched the earth. Then he saw in his dream a woman. A woman came from the sky with a baby in her arms. She put the baby in the nest of straw. And the king in his dream saw the scales immediately begin to move until the child outweighed the side loaded with gold, jewels, and houses. The side with the baby touched the earth and the material side tipped to the sky. Mary foresaw that kind of tipping of the scales in the still unformed life 
of her baby boy. Mary, an ordinary young girl, said yes to her Lord. You know, God wants to do amazing things through each one of us. But even more important, God wants us to do the ordinary things of the kingdom of God. The important little things that touch others with God's love. God wants us to love him. God wants us to love others. And most of all, God wants us to be obedient. God is waiting and ready to jump for joy when we say yes to his amazing love and his amazing grace. When we say yes, are we willing to set ourselves aside to live for Jesus Christ? Micah foretold the coming of Jesus 700 years before Jesus' birth. Foretold to be born in a little ordinary city of Bethlehem, the smallest of all the towns of Judah. So the question on this Christmas Sunday, are you ready to leap for joy this Christmas season? For Jesus Christ will be born. We all love a birthday party, a celebration, but the celebration only begins as we await the coming once again of our Lord and of our Savior. Let us share with everyone the good news. Jesus is God's Son. Jesus is our Savior. Amen. Will you pray with me? Lord, the power that Mary showed in her witness of love, a love that set aside her entire life to walk with you in the joy and in the heartbreak and horror of life. Lord, help us to see the life of Mary as an example of how we are to live called, blessed to be your hands in the world today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Will you stand with me for our benediction? Christmas is about love. It's about walking with one another. I had the privilege this week of uh, repeating the marriage vows for Dennis and Cotty Wicker. Been married 25 years on December 13th. What touches me is that they chose to come back into God's house and to say thank you for a love for 25 years. That's what God asks us to do is never fall out of love with Jesus Christ. No matter the challenges of life, no matter the disasters of life, no matter the joys of life, never fall out of love with God through Jesus Christ. I don't know if Mavis is going to make it till Christmas. And I know her prayer is to go be with Jesus this Christmas. But Mavis is in love with Jesus Christ. And with her dying moments, she praises her Lord and her Savior. May this Christmas be a Christmas where we focus not on us, but on the love that God has given through his Son, Jesus Christ. Amen.